welcome back. We are talking today about something that is always asked, and that is what camera do you use? Yeah, we're going to go further than that too. We're going to talk about all of our basic kit and what we're bringing um, to our documentary films. So to start off with, let's talk about cameras. So I think um, in this day and age, uh, there's now probably a new benchmark that you need a 4K camera or 4K cameras. For us, we've got about five of them, I think five uh, and sometimes we pull them all out but two would be absolutely critical in my opinion for getting um, two shot interviews which make it much easier for the editing. Now people always ask for the specifics exactly what camera do we use? Yeah we're using Canon C200 cinema cameras right now which shoot um, natively in 4k uh, and we're using L series prime lenses from Canon as well so the lenses is the other part of the camera equation so um, for documentary filmmaking you often want um, really flexible lenses so you might be looking at zoom lenses um, we've got some um, 25 to 124 or something and you know we've got some wider lenses than that some telephotos as well they're good for different scenarios that you might be filming in it's worth investing in quality lenses and so we now use um, two Canon C200s but we previously used one Canon C200 and a Canon 5D so maybe Let's talk through why we changed to having two matching cameras whenever we're on location. Having matching cameras certainly helps for the editing um, in terms of keeping the colour space and the exposure settings and other camera settings really consistent. So I think that's the biggest benefit. Often filmmakers will mix and match cameras. You know, there's just a bit more to it in the post-production workflow. When we were using um, the Canon 5D Mark IVs, which are a great camera in some respects for a documentary filmmaker because you can sort of just tuck them under your arm and take them almost anywhere. So in terms of accessibility and getting still really beautiful and quite cinematic looking shots, they can be good. They have the added benefit of being able to take really high quality stills photographs. So we still use them for stills all the time and additional angles, but they're not our go to, you know, camera A, camera B cameras anymore. I have to say, so everything's 4K now, which is which is great because I mean you recently won a cinematography award for one of our films that you filmed all in 4K and it's a beautiful film and then it was on broadcast television last night and it was down resed and it was very disappointing. <laughs> Yeah. So, so why do you need 4K? Look, because the streamers want it now and the broadcasters often require it as a delivery item. So I think if you're going to put it on a cinema screen, it's becoming the new standard. Um, so it will limit your distribution pathways uh, for your film if you shoot at a lower resolution like HD. So documentary filmmaking, obviously you're out and about, you're moving around a lot. Does the size of the camera need to be considered? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we have to weigh our gear all the time because we don't want to check our gear and we want to have it be really transportable uh, and it needs to go on planes as hand luggage. So the actual weight and the profile of the gear becomes really important in terms of how you can check it on the plane. So having um, a lightweight but very high quality camera is a big part of the decision making and something that's ergonomic so that you can use it in different ways. So you can chuck it on a tripod, but you can also hand hold it if you need to, depending on the type of filmmaking you're doing. So these become really important decisions about what type of camera you're going to invest in. So we've talked about cameras, we've talked about um, shooting ratios, lenses, yep. and the other really critical part of it is the tripod. Yeah, the tripod's such a big part of it, I think. You know, having a tripod that's really easy to use is absolutely critical. In here at Moonshine Agency, we really favour lightweight tripods that are really strong and really um, adaptable in what they can do in terms of giving you the ability to take really high shots, really low angle shots, um, get them into you know small places etc. So we favour carbon fibre uh, tripods that have telescopic legs, you know, that kind of are very extendable for one operator to use. So uh, this is also one of the more lightweight tripods you can get. And you probably noticed I'm, I'm trying not to laugh because as you're saying all this with the tripods and the telescopic yeah. legs, I'm thinking about the presenter on one of our films at the moment is, oh, he's going to be six foot five. Like he is so tall. And when we're out on a shoot, we practically needed a stepladder because for him to do a piece to camera, the camera had to be so high 
as you know, none of us in the crew were that tall. And so we couldn't actually look into the viewfinder to check the shot uh, without getting a step bladder, which is <laughs> something to consider as well. Tripods are really important. Yeah. Is there anything else with camera and gear? Like we haven't talked about specialty cameras. Oh, look, um, so if we talk about specialty cameras, we've got um, a new one. It's called a Ronin 4D, which is a 6K cinema camera that is really good for stabilizing that camera in terms of being able to run with it and move around really dynamically and keep focus on moving subjects. So that's one that's in our kit. We've also had other types of gimbals that we can attach to our other cameras um, to get moving camera shots over the years. We've got a number of different specialty cameras, including little action cams that you can, you know, stick onto cars or, you know, other moving vehicles uh, and other places that are too hard to get to with a normal camera. And of course the drone gets a lot of use in our productions yep. in terms of being able to get beautiful um, cinematic aerial shots as well. I think you actually said the other day, if you ever retired from filmmaking, you'd just hire yourself as a drone pilot because you, <laughs> you've done so I've much of so it. so much practice, yeah. So I guess that's mainly it for the camera kit. Um, other things that you guys will need to think about are gonna be the bags that you use. You want really durable, high quality, lightweight bags that with you can wheels. roll with wheels <laughs> yeah that you can roll around so that's absolutely critical for a documentary crew now when you're in production you're going to be capturing a lot of footage so how do you manage all of that data oh uh, look if you're shooting multiple cameras like we are at 4k it's a huge amount of data that you need to manage at every day after you finish a shoot so you're going to need a lot of you know solid state you know um, cards and drives to capture all of this material onto. It's absolutely critical that you have enough cards and that you have plenty of backup cards because that's the worst thing that can happen is running out of card space during a shoot or hard drive space if you're recording straight to a hard drive. You're going to want to make sure that everything's been copied off and then copied off again so you've got a double redundancy and you're going to want to watch that uh, those rushes from each day to make sure there are no corrupt files in there so that um, everything can be safely formatted from those cards or initialized for the next day's shooting. Data backups are really important. Let's talk through how we manage that. Yeah, we always have at least two portable hard drives that we back up all of the rushes too, so that if one goes down or something happens to it, there's always a backup of it. In which case we would then go and buy another drive and back it up immediately to that drive. So you want to keep these two drives in separate locations I was just, and you want to back yeah. it up every single day. I was going to say it's the having the the separation so that you know you don't have your both your drives and your camera all in the one bag because if that bag goes missing you lose everything. So you always want to sort of it's like your passport. You've got to think about it like, yeah. you know, it's that critical to your production. You need to make sure you've got backups. Something to really think about is the size of your kit because if you are out and about, I, my heart always goes out to those, you know, media film crews with their massive Pelican cases. And uh, I just think it's so much to lug around. Yeah. So just take that into consideration when you're, you know, choosing your camera. How heavy is it? How easy, light, practical is it going to be out in the field? Now, the other thing I want to mention is just a couple of accessories that I think are really important. And I'm not going to go into them all because there are tons. But some things that we use on almost every shoot are um, accessories to clean the lenses with. So we're out in the world, you know, it's going to get dusty. You're going to get stuff on your lenses. You need to have lots of lens cloths and blowers and stuff to clean the lenses at all times. Um, if you're working outdoors a lot on your productions, it's gonna be really important that you have like sun shields that give you a bit of shade over your monitor, because uh, you may not always be wanting to use the eyepiece um, and the viewfinder uh, to check your shots. And the other thing has to do with audio recording, but we'll probably move on to microphones now anyway, so I can touch on that after this. Yeah, so that's a lot from us on cameras and what cameras you can use. You can, I mean, you can use whatever cameras you want to really. The important thing is that you know how to use it and that it works for the film that you are making. But that was just a bit of background on what we use for the films that we're producing. And next week we are gonna be back and we are talking all about the sound gear. So please come back next week and we'll tell you all about what type of microphones you're gonna need on your production.